we start them off young in San Diego. Like growing up, in, you would think when you have your kid born in San Diego that they're going to be in the water and surfing. Logan is learning to surf. And he's only five years old. These are the things that you, you wish for as a mom. Wish because for so long, today wasn't a part of Samantha Vanchelski's reality. Her son, our new surfer, has SMA, or spinal muscular atrophy. It's hard to know that he's going to have to have a little bit more hardships in his life. Logan can't eat or walk, but don't tell him that. I love this kid. <laughs> Look at this. He's out here surfing. And he's not alone. Ricochet is Logan's teacher and new best friend. He was really concerned that the sharks were going to come for him and Ricochet. <laughs> so I think now he's going to feel a little more comfortable. And yes, he's hanging 10. It, it kind of re-solidifies the fact that you can still have a great life with a disability. While Logan is a novice, you could say Ricochet is a pro. Ricochet's the one who jumped on a surfboard with a boy who was quadriplegic six years ago. And she keeps coming back. That gives so much empowerment to that child that it's pretty indescribable. It's just kind of like a thrill because you... I don't, it's hard to find a way to say thank you. It's just really neat to know that you can have people like this that are coming out here and volunteering their time and helping him do something we didn't ever think he'd be able to do when we got a diagnosis. In La Jolla Shores. You want to go again? <laughs> Craig Herrera. <laughs> We're really happy. 10 News. Over here looking for some tools. Kevin Bernardino earns a living at an auto body another shop in Logan life. Heights. Another, another day, another part. <laughs> like, I don't know what it is, God, but I must be doing something right. Something right. Uh, it just gave me faith to keep going. After a rough start in life. Yeah. Perhaps you can see it in this picture. It's artwork about four feet by five feet. It has, it has many things to say. But it won't speak to you from a gallery. I walked up to it and I, the first thing I said was God bless America. <laughs> it hangs from a fence next to six others on a street in Logan Heights. It's inspiring. Yeah. John Morales moved into the neighborhood in March. Uh, he's actually a member of the social club of the Elks Lodge. He says there's a misconception about Logan Heights. That because there's people of different ethnicities, uh, that it's an unsafe neighborhood, but that's absolutely not true. So he wanted to do something about it. And so I had this idea that I would use this space to photograph my neighbors and uh, tell the story of, of the neighborhood through their faces. And display them in an unlikely canvas, his fence. We'll put more photos on this uh, fence, and then I'd love to go across the street. All to get people talking here, to each other uh, and about the good in this sometimes forgotten neighborhood. Well, in Logan Heights, Craig Herrera, 10 News. Uh, I'm Craig Herrera at Balboa Park. I'll show you the new app exposing some of the hidden gems in San Diego's Crown Jewel. It's the sights and sounds that make Balboa Park one of the most picturesque places in the world. There's a lot of history here in the park. Even the locals keep coming back. I grew up just a couple miles from here. It's 1,200 acres of pure beauty. And within that 1,200 acres, there's tons of, there's several theaters, lots of museums, great restaurants. And some hidden treasures. Now, there's an app for that. And this new app is so easy to use, you just download it right onto your phone and start searching and exploring Balboa Park. Uh, yeah, yeah, just, uh, this is great, this is great. Jeremy Volper is using the free Balboa Park app to find features he didn't even know existed. I've never heard of the Dinosaur Cafe before. And he's learning more about his favorite restaurant, the Prado. Tuesday night is, is date night, I didn't know that. The app even helps with parking. Well, parking is, is, is parking, you know. The developers really know their way around. They're from San Diego, just like Jeremy. Uh, I wish uh, somehow I, I could have been the one that came up with this because I have a you know strong, I love this place. Don't we all? If they want my opinion for something, you know, they can call me. <laughs> At Balboa Park, Craig Herrera, 10 News. Paisley Cavanaugh loves artwork. Anything that I could glue, anything I can just craft with, that's what I'll do. Today, it's a paintbrush and a canvas. Usually when I'm stressed, it just helps me kind of calm down. It's an outlet for this fifth grader from Oceanside. Kids aren't really supposed to go through this. Really, no one's supposed to go through. You'd never know it.
It was pretty hard for me, but I just kind of went through it. But this happy little girl has a rare brain tumor. Craniopharyngioma. Only about two out of every 100,000 people get this type of tumor. Paisley has gotten it twice. I think a centimeter. But the first one was the size of a golf ball. She spent a lot of time at Children's Hospital. And shortly after Paisley's return home, she found a way to express herself, and that was through a book. Go now Paisley hopes her words resonate with others. To come pick me up. I've wanted to give it to some doctors, um, nurses, and some children in Children's Hospital. And she just got some good news from another hospital. I just got selected to go to St. Jude's Hospital in Tennessee. That's where they're working on something called proton therapy. Technically killing the tumor and shrinking the tumor to where this would be, you know, a past thing for her, so she wouldn't have to go through it again. The family will go for about two weeks. Doing all the baseline evaluations where they do MRIs, scans, a sleep study, a fitness evaluation, basically a whole evaluation. They'll briefly return home, then fly back to Florida. Where her proton radiation will take place, and that's six weeks long. Paisley is sharing her story online, but bottom line, she has one message for doctors. Discover how you can make it stop happening. In Oceanside, Craig Herrera, 10 News. Hi, boy. Ollie the Frenchie runs to therapy. He does acupuncture and cold laser. He also spends about 20 to 30 minutes in this hydrotherapy tank. This way he's got a whole program of things to do to help accelerate the healing. Ha, ah, mister. Ollie had a compressed disc in July. He went right into surgery. He can't use his hind legs on land yet, but look at him go in the water. He's making progress. He's got a lot of hip, knee, an ankle motion and his foot motion is starting to come on board. Natalie Lindbergh, a registered Perfect. veterinary technician, owns my total so dog in Oceanside like and she's been doing this since 1987. I'm not here promoting the total dog. I'm not here condoning the, the veterinary medical board. I'm just here for all the animals in California. Good job. Go get it. Care like this could stop if the veterinary medical board changes a rule. You're really incorporating a huge group of people out there already doing this, well established in the veterinary community doing this, that would go under the bus if this law passes as is. The board wants to make it mandatory for a vet to be present during any animal rehabilitation. The change is due to concerns that too many unlicensed people may be offering services that could hurt pets. Lindbergh just wants to make sure all animal caregivers like her have a voice throughout this process. You ready to go, mister? You want to show him some more? If something like this wasn't available, what would he do? He would go home, you know? In Oceanside, so, Craig Herrera, 10 News. That's why we're here. <laughs> You can't drink this water. No, it's not. No, That's gross. <laughs> Don't even think about cooking with it. This is the water that comes from your toilets. This is recycled water. It's dirty, so you have to sanitize your hands, but I mean, it's good for the crops. And you can use it without restrictions. It's very good for the environment and for us. For our crops, we can water them without having an effect on our water bill. Customers of the Olivenhine Municipal Water District can pull up to one of seven fill stations, kind of like pumping gas. Except you're filling a bucket of water that happens to be extremely heavy. It's free. Good job, Jeffrey. The lid back on. Good job, Jeffrey. Neighbors go through an application process and learn how to handle the water. Because the water is dirty, you have to sanitize your hands after you touch it. You can get up to 300 gallons each visit with unlimited visits. And keep this in mind, one gallon weighs a little over eight pounds, so if you were to fill 100 gallons, that's about 834 pounds in your car. It'll be open through February per the emergency drought order by Governor Jerry Brown. We will have two staff members here at all times. The district has to cut water use by 32 percent. This might have the potential to become a permanent um, station in the future. Levenhine produces about one million gallons of recycled water each day. That's heavy. In Forest Ranch, I'm meteorologist Craig Herrera, 10 News.